Foundation grant for the Scriber Public Library Project, Our Community Growing Together. This project also acknowledges the 130th anniversary of the Scriber Public Library. My name is Tracy Berry and I am here to paint with you today. Ready? Let's go. Today you're going to really enjoy the image that we are going to be creating. It is a landscape scene and I bet you all see it very often around here where there's a clearing close to a lake with a beautiful uh, sunrise or sunset, whichever you prefer. Um, and of course the beautiful silhouetted trees that we love so dear around here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the background. We're going to start blending straight onto the canvas today um, and it'll start to progress and become the beautiful image uh, that uh, that it will become. Now remember that each and every one of you have your own um, natural style and unique way to paint. So give yourself some credit, be kind to yourself and continue on with the painting uh, at any point in time. Of course you can always rewind um, this video and go back to see how I've done something but I want you to be able to have fun, explore and just see how the colors blend on the canvas. Be kind to yourself and take time with this painting. At the end of it, you are absolutely going to love it. The first thing you want to do is be able to map out your canvas. Now, uh, what that means is that you want to draw some directional lines onto your canvas just so that you know where you're going with the painting. The one main uh, feature of this painting is, of course, the horizon line and that beautiful sky coming straight up. So what we want to do is we actually want to create quite some distance um, and space at the top of our canvas canvas, which means the horizon line needs to drop down to, um, I would say, um, one-fourth of the canvas. I hope my math is okay right now. And I'm just going to be drawing, a, use your ruler or a straight edge, and what you're going to be doing is drawing a straight line um, just at the bottom of your canvas, and that creates where the sky meets the land. Now you can, if you choose to, you can um, move this line up or down um, and that just changes the look of the overall painting. But what we're looking on today is really bringing out that horizon line and the sky because it's gorgeous. So the first three colors that we're going to start off using today um, from your packages that you received from the library and if you are using your home paints or ones that you bought from the store um, you can change up the colors as you want to. I'm always encouraging um, you know for you to kind of create this to be your own painting so if that means you want to have a nice uh, orangey sky more so than the purpley blue um, yellowy orange that we're doing today um, you can change it up and use the colors you have now at home. So the colors we are starting with are lemon yellow, vermilion, and we're going to do ultramarine blue this time. And you only want to do a little bit at a time and start to apply the paint slowly. And if you need more paint, you can always, um, you know, reload um, your palette. Um, so today for the background, what we're going to be using is the thicker rounded edge flat brush. Um, you will find that there is a flat edge brush in your kits. Um, however, you don't need that today. We are going to use a little one later on today for the background, your thicker rounded flat edge brush. And we're going to go in with Basically, we want to start with lighter to darker, but we're blending as we go along as well. We're going to start at the very, very top, and we're going to go in with a little bit of the red, which is the vermilion. So we're going to start off with the red way up high because being able to create the red and then adding in the blue and kind of doing a smudgy kind of effect, blending it together is going to create a beautiful purple. So we want to start off with that lighter color, the red, um, and it will later on help us control and blend in the darker color, the blue. Let's just get it on there. So you can add some water to really, you know, get this to spread across your canvas. We're really just trying to get a good grounding color. I'm going to get some more red in there. And I like to, for when I'm doing the sky, I like to do nice long brush strokes like this. 
but then change direction and the direction of the paintbrushes uh, streaks across the canvas is going to kind of help you start to place out um, kind of the sky and the direction of the clouds and it's going to kind of happen so easily and naturally for you if you just go quickly and don't think too much about it. So you can see I have a couple streaks going this way and a couple streaks going that way. Wouldn't that just be a really beautiful cloud that's coming across the sky like that? So it's a part of, a part of it is planning and mapping out your canvas with a line and kind of having an idea of what you're going to be painting. But the other side of it is being able to use your imagination and just see See where it takes you. I'm adding in that ultramarine blue right now and we're creating this like really nice purple that's coming in and you can really move this brush around and really create these streaks in the sky. Now I am going to be blending and blending and blending these colors until there's very little streaks and it's more just blended and flat color. Flat color being that there's no blobs of paint um, on there and there's more of a soft appeal than a really textured look. And you can just have fun with this. Um, Bob Ross always does these X's, you'll see him do. He uses a different type of paint than us, so it's a little bit more that he can move the paint around without using water. But still, you can do X's like Bob Ross, or you can just do these like really energetic lines like I'm doing right now. So now we're gonna move on down because I think I've blurred that out a lot. And we're gonna go back into that once it kind of dries and all of these little streaky marks that you see, they're gonna become that direction of the clouds overhead. So that's where I say, um, you know, take a look at it and if you, you know, if you don't like this look, then just keep going through and blending and moving around that paint. If you are uh, enjoying this look of the movement in the sky that the paint is creating, then you can stop at this point and wait for the next step. I think that looks pretty cool. So continuing on with the sky, we get that nice dark um, purpley kind of um, overcast that's happening right now. And again, I did leave some streaks of paint on there, very, very smooth, light streaks of paint so that I can start to fit in some clouds and it will really help me direct uh, with the direction of the clouds and just to visualize it a little bit further. So sometimes we leave those kind of things in there to help us with the next step. Um, what we want to do now is we want to kind of bring in these lighter colors of yellow and pinks, which are going to kind of transform and blend into orange. But what I always like to do is kind of give like a separation of, uh, of cloud in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush and we're going to go into a little bit of white and we're going to bring the white all the way down, just the same we did. And it's going to blend a bit with the purple. We're going to just bring it down. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So like I said, we're going to be adding some white because I do like to see a little bit of, um, a little bit of a change in tone, I would say, from the beginning of the canvas, the top of the canvas and the sky to the bottom. And it's also going to help us kind of introduce those lighter colors that the darker colors would affect. So we want to just kind of control a little bit of the blending process instead of blending everything together and getting brown. We don't want that in there. <laughs> so let's go in with some white. Okay, so we are using the same brush. The only thing is that I did clean it so that we had that purpley blue and red um, out of the brush. And now I'm gonna go in with my white and we're gonna do these circles. And we're starting to bring in a different feeling into the background here. More white. And this is going to take a little bit because you want to make sure that you are comfortable with what's happening on your canvas. At first, it might just look like a really big, too big of a change almost in a way. And that's, and that's normal. That is normal. I'm even feeling it right now. There's such a change that happens um, when you are 
using a different brush stroke, changing up the color, and really just exploring and figuring out what you can do with your canvas. Now, that looks like wonderful clouds billowing in. Beautiful. I like the circular motion because it starts to pull and drag some of that purple in. And then as you get away from that purple, you can start to come down the canvas a little bit more. Again, in X's, or you can always just do what I do and do some messy brush strokes. And don't worry, we're gonna be adding more and more on. It's just that these different steps need time to dry. All right, so now we can have a little bit of fun with, of course, that sunset or sunrise. So now that we've got um, a kind of idea that there are some really nice billowing clouds in here, the purpley color is starting to blend a little bit with the white, and then as you move down your canvas, it's gonna become lighter and lighter, and this is where we can do a little bit of magic, including the um, yellow and adding in a bit of red and seeing how uh, they can blend. Now because this is closer to the horizon line. We can do a little bit of thinner, streakier kind of appearance in the sky and the clouds because they're most likely reflecting the sunset. So I'm gonna go in and clean my brush. Wipe any excess paint off on your napkin. And let's go into using a smaller brush, still the rounded tip. It looks very much like the very first brush we used but it's a bit smaller, isn't it? So we're gonna use that smaller one and we're gonna use it straight. Uh, so what I do is I hold it like a pencil and I don't wanna hold it too close to the bristles, but I also don't wanna hold it too far away. The reason is this is where you're going to gain the most control of your brush strokes and you can still have a lot of room um, to move your arm or your elbow. It's just a lot more comfortable to do. You'll see artists painting like this often, and that's okay to do, it's just they wanna remove that control away from themselves, be able to see a full image from further away. So, um, you know, to each their own, but for the purpose of uh, a really nice smaller piece like this, um, you know, you, you want to make sure you have and you can uh, gain the most control over your brush strokes. And so holding a paintbrush uh, like a pencil, um, of course, is going to be a lot easier for most people. So I encourage you to hold it this way. Let's go into the yellow and into the vermilion. I probably need to add a little bit more of vermilion because we're going to use a bit more and we're going to blend it out to be yellow. Uh, a beautiful pinky vermilion, and then blending into the orange. Let's do it. Let's start with yellow. We're starting with the lighter color. And I'm gonna hold it straight, directly straight from my canvas. And we're gonna make more of streaky lines here. And you can really have fun with this and be very random with this. I'm trying to stay a away from that uh, change in the middle that we created with the white. And we're gonna just start adding in this yellow in a streaky fashion. So now that we have this beautiful yellow in, let's start to in incorporate that uh, vermilion and just start to see, I didn't clean my brush at all, by the way, but we're gonna start to see it start to slowly blend in. And again, you can be very random with this. It's kind of fun to, um, you know, put the streaks in and then smooth it with the flat edge. So I'm kind of putting the streaks in and then I'm smoothing it out. And it's, you can do it fast or you can do it slow. I like to kind of um, play around with where it is going to be. And I also like to play around with the size of streakiness. And um, if something's a little too dark, you can always go in with the yellow and blend it out again. So I'm changing now my brush from being um, sideways to make the thin streaks, then churning it to swipe and blend the paint onto the canvas in a thicker fashion. And it's just gonna start to blend. Have fun with this. And go until you feel comfortable with your sky. 
I also like to look at the canvas in three different sections. So it might look weird right now that, that there's this is different, this part's different, and this part's different. But I'm really, I'm kind of blocking that out and I'm looking at this right now because this on its own is wonderful, the middle part is wonderful, and then this part's wonderful. So if you can kind of um, separate um, and, and try to just focus on the area that you're working on right now, it's going to be a lot easier to, um, you know, enjoy the painting and, and, and really go through the motions of um, having fun with it. <laughs> All right. So that there, I think, is absolutely gorgeous. Now what we want to do is we want to start to move up the canvas and start to bring in a lot of these colors and elements throughout the sky. And we do that with incorporating clouds that maybe would reflect these colors. Um, so once you're here, what you want to do is take a little bit of a step back and clean your brush and then we're going to go back in and go back up to really bring out clouds and incorporate these colors up to the top of the canvas. So as I had said before, with this step, the way that we pull and we're able to bring these colors upward to make this really as one piece in the background, because that background is really what brings the whole painting um, together. That's kind of our focal point is just creating this beautiful background. So that's why we're spending so much time on this and kind of trying to bring um, you know, all these beautiful colors throughout the whole canvas. Now, if you like it like this, you're more than welcome to, of course, uh, create, start to create the lake and the trees and go forward. But, you know, um, for today, I'm gonna just go ahead and take that extra step um, to bring these clouds in and to really dance the colors around. I think uh, it'll really turn out in the long run. I think it'll be beautiful. So let's do that today. I'm gonna bring in the more white onto my palette. And now we're gonna go back in with the uh, smaller rounded flat brush. And we're going to kind of pick and choose. This one's, this is a great part because you get to pick and choose. If there's something you don't like in the background, just put a fluffy little cloud there. <laughs> so let's go on in here and let's bring in some clouds that kind of come in the direction like kind of across and down because that's where a lot of my brush strokes are going and then this one right here this brush stroke brush stroke sorry guys <laughs> I'm getting tongue-tied um, so this brush stroke right here is beautiful a nice elongated cloud and that can hold a lot of the other colors in it so let's have fun with that and just start to place in and I'm following my brush strokes that's why we left them in there because they're a great guideline and you can you can blend these clouds out quite a bit or you can just continue to layer on the thick paint and once it dries that's when we're going to just kind of um, go in and put back in some of those fun colors. That white becomes a cloud but it also is a really great um, uh, what would you call that? A, like Almost like a primer on the wall for the other colors to go up there and you can see them. You'll be able to see the colors instead of just painting them right over top of that um, purple, that dark purple. Let's come right in here and bring another cloud. And I'm just, I, you know, I guess what I'm doing is I'm kind of tapping and swirling. So I'm if I did it in a big motion, it'd be like tap, swirl, tap, swirl. But I'm doing it very soft and very small. And I'm just gonna build up these clouds. So it's kind of like a quick tap and swirl. There we go. Let's bring in like just like a really fun little cloud here. Let's make these clouds a little bit more apparent. Now, the, depending on how you paint this part, these billowing clouds, this is wonderful because to each their own, it's always so different from 
my paintings to others who are painting with me. This sometimes can look like the fog on the lake. And I just think it's so neat how, you know, we get that um, often here on Lake, with Lake Superior, how that billowing fog comes over the lake and you can see it coming um, over, over the islands. And um, so, uh, depending on how you paint this, and also how you know those who see your painting view this, you might even get the they might get the idea that it's the billowing fog over the lake, and I think that is so cool. So you can see I'm starting to bring in some white clouds down at the bottom here, but I am using that wispy, thinner look of the brush turned on its side and making more wisps. And some of my paint is uh, was still wet, so yeah, it might come off a little bit, but guess what? That might just be a nice big tree in the background there. So anything is fixable. Um, I love doing landscapes because that's exactly what happens, is that, you know, you're blending or you're creating something, and the next thing you know, something happens on the canvas, and, um, you know, you could get stressed about it, or you can say, oh, I think I'm going to put a fluffy cloud there. Or, oh, maybe uh, there will just be a really big tree right there that I can cover up those little things that, you know, I feel might be mistakes or harder to cover up. Or easy to cover up, but harder to fix. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think that's pretty cool. And giving your clouds different directions is so much more fun than doing these, you know, straight, fluffy, cartoon clouds. You want to just have fun with your painting. Try different things. And, you know, when you look out there to the sky and nature, um, nothing's perfect. Nothing is perfect. And clouds go with the wind. So, different directions are so are so lovely to do you're really going to enjoy that okay i think i really like that let's clean our brush all right so now that we have the clouds in there and there's so much happening let's bring these colors up as if the clouds are kind of reflecting a little bit of the uh, sunset. So we have the three colors right here and we're gonna go in with the lighter to the darker and then after we do that we can kind of play around a bit. Let's bring in that lighter and you're just gonna softly brush. I did clean my brush at this point by the way and I'm clearly just going to almost like um, I am creating with this paint a wash. My paintbrush is wet with water from cleaning my brush. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just kind of doing like a, a really quick brush onto the tops and uh, bottoms in between, just randomly bringing this color in amongst the clouds. That's all I wanna do is just bring a little bit of that color in. Right now we're not going to focus on, you know, where is the light source? Where is the colors coming from? With clouds, they're so forgiving anyways, and I think people don't um, give themselves enough credit because clouds are, you, you know, you need to take the time to build clouds up. And when you're doing a painting like this, it's fun. Um, it's still going to turn out beautiful. You don't have to really, um, you know, take, um, take it so seriously, and you can really just dance around colors when it comes to clouds and the sky. Um, this is your world, this is your painting, so you just create it how you want to, and don't worry about necessarily the light sources when it comes to um, creating a piece like this. So let's go into that vermilion. Now this one's gonna be a little bit of a harsher color. I have not cleaned my brush, because I still want a bit of that yellow in there, and it will help me control that bright vermilion color. It'll turn it into a bit of orange, soften it, and it just helps overall with the blending. So we're gonna go in now and we're going to start to have fun placing a little bit of this vermilion in. And I personally like to do it on the sides of the canvas because it's helping me frame my canvas in um, so it would be chosen as like that dark 
the darker color that's blending from the outside in. And I'm just gonna go in, place it on like I did, and then I'm gonna go in with the side of my brush and I'm gonna start to slowly swirl my brush around in circles and it's gonna soften it up. Let's do that on this side as well. Oh, you can do it this way. And let's go right here. Place it on and swirl it. Place it on and swirl it. See, I'm just placing on and swirling. So it really, be kind to yourself. Go ahead in there. If it gets a little bit too dark, go in with the lighter color. So that would be my yellow would be the lighter color. I can go in and I can really just lighten it up and make it that beautiful orange. So see, we're just having fun with blending these colors together and bringing them into the sky. There we go, let's clean our brush. Now let's do a little bit of the blue. Now the blue, that beautiful ultramarine blue, we need to control this color because it is the darkest of the colors. And what ends up happening is we can place it on there without thinking and it can just kind of take over the painting. Um, so what we want to do is we want to teach it how to behave, really. Here we go. So what we want to do is we want to go deep under these clouds and every now and then we can bring it into the sky as well. But let's just bring a little bit of this really nice blue and I'm doing it on the edge. Still holding it like a pencil, but I've flipped my hand and then bringing it under the edge. And I'll show you what I do with this in a second. Okay, so now that we have that blue on, this is a bit of a time sensitive thing. You wanna clean your brush, wipe off any excess paint, and while that blue is still dry. Now, I should just let you know that if it, this still looks beautiful, but while this paint is still dry, you can start to blend that blue out a little bit in areas that you just, don't really necessarily need it to be as dark as it is. And that's just with water. It's a clean brush and I'm moving this paint around. And you can dance it now up into the clouds a little bit. And by dance, I guess I mean swirl <laughs> into the clouds a little bit. Clean your brush, wipe any excess paint off go into any areas. And this paint is um, probably going to somewhat remove itself from your canvas if you end up getting too much water or wetness on there. But keep in mind that, um, you know, it, it all comes together in the long run. If you don't like something like this that's happening, you either put something in front of it or you can go in with, say, your white and just smooth it all back out again, bring in that cloud again, you know? So just play at this point until you're comfortable with the sky. So this might take you longer than me, and you might just be done at this point in time. Remember that this is a video and that you are able to pause uh, the video, rewind the video, or even fast forward the video if you really feel like you've gotten this step down and you're ready to move on. I'm adding in a bit of white because I kind of um, moved to, away from the blue at this point and I want to soften up some things. So I'm going back into the white and that's gonna be my last step is basically softening a lot of these clouds with the white. So clean brush, go in with the white and you the white will move color around and soften it. And so that will allow you to do a lot of things with all these colors in the sky. And white also is wonderful for pushing things deep into the distance. So, I mean, it kind of does a lot for you in this painting because you want the sky to be, you know, um, blending and moving and feeling a lot of energy and all those colors need to blend together, but it also needs to push everything into the background for when we do our lake, which is the next step. And let's, let's just go do that right now. I think I'm happy with the sky. Okay, so we are cleaning our brush now because we are done with the sky. 
Let's wipe off all the excess paint onto our napkins and we are moving to the rounded flat bigger brush okay now what we want to do is we literally just want to try to copy what's happening here or anywhere in the sky really you just really want to copy a bit of the sky into the reflection it's so important but we want it to be a nice calm day of course um, and even though these clouds are billowing and everything um, it's just breaking away and it's gonna be a real calm night tonight I think that's what we're doing today <laughs> so we're gonna start with the white because it helps blend everything together so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take a nice big dollop of white on my brush and I'm gonna start to place it onto my canvas the bottom part of my canvas remember what we had mapped out before that's what we are doing we're putting in that white now you can start going in with your yellow which is the lighter color and let's just go flat with the brush we don't need those streaky lines because we really want very little ripple effect in the lake because it is so calm and beautiful and beautiful go in with a little bit without cleaning my brush we're gonna go in a little bit with the vermilion beautiful and let's just blend that out blend it out nice and light I'm blending and blending and blending I'm not gonna reload my brush unless I absolutely need to this should give me a really nice effect of a smooth light and calm very calm lake view. And there we go. So let's clean our brush. And I'll meet you back to do some landscapes and some trees, but we need to let this dry first. It's only going to take about 15 minutes um, with this paint. It might take um, uh, some of you a little bit longer if you're working with other, um, say, house paint or perhaps like a different variety of acrylic paints. Um, so just always come back to your canvas. Um, you can always touch the edges and little bits that you last painted to see if it's really dry. And when it is dry, I'll meet you back here. Okay, and we're back. Um, next step is now that we've let the canvas dry, we were able to do the islands in the background and then really build this painting up by creating those beautiful tree silhouettes. Um, I think that in this part of the painting process, um, you may be feeling a little bit of frustration or you might even be feeling like, um, you know, maybe you need to work out the sky a little bit more and all that kind of stuff. We all naturally feel that way. But just like every artist has to do, we have to pick a time where it's where we need to move forward, we need to move on. And we need to also have the confidence that anything that's on here um, is fixable, where we can adjust, we can create, um, you know, a tree silhouette or place in islands where maybe there's something on the canvas we don't like and we want to hide it. We, we're going to place um, different um, silhouettes down. We're going to cover it up. So, um, so at this point in time, I just want you to kind of trust me and move forward with me. Um, and of course, um, again, you can always uh, pause and rewind the video um, if you need to. Um, just take it slow, take your time, and let's create a beautiful painting together. So for the islands, we are going to start off with black because it's a really good base. And then we're going to go in and actually bring in uh, some of the purple hues of the clouds into the islands. Uh, it's not necessary to show, you know, uh, foliage or trees or anything in the background uh, because it's so far in the distance. Uh, it really is a blurred look. Uh, a blurred um, appearance of the landscape. So the people viewing your artwork will already kind of know that's an island with trees, okay? So what we wanna do is we're gonna start off with the black. So I'm just gonna put a dollop on my palette. And we're going to use um, one of the pointy brushes in your kits. 
There we go. Now, these, uh, you know, you might find that they're a little bit uh, frayed or something like that. You can always just softly try to pick out any loose hairs um, or even just trim up the top if you absolutely need to, but be careful when doing that. So now what we're going to do is create the islands in the distance. And these are kind of fun to do. Uh, they really are just the case of starting on the horizon line where we put the pencil mark. And that's the bottom of your island. And then you can create any shape really you want. And you can wobble your brush and just have fun with that shape. So let's fill that first island in. Do your best to stay above that horizon line that you drew. Okay, so now for this one, some of you might choose just to keep it as, um, you know, uh, the island is there and then maybe you go and you boat around that cove. I'm going to close off um, this scene though with another island and I'm just going to have it dip down and meet the first island we painted in. Now, of course, again, there are gonna be trees and things in the way, um, but it's always important just to finish off your thought in each stage. So I am gonna go ahead and paint this all the way across the canvas. And there is my second little island, and we're just gonna keep the horizon line nice and straight. Now, this is where it kind of gets a bit fun. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean our brush. Wipe off any excess paint. And we're gonna grab this one right here, that smaller rounded tipped brush, okay? And we're gonna go in with um, a little bit of the vermilion and a little bit of the blue onto our brush and let's just see how this blends together and if it really creates a kind of dark huey huey i don't know if that's a word but a dark uh purpley hue so let's go ahead and add a little bit of the blue and the vermilion together and let's just try to see how it blends into the black and it's not necessarily um, so that it is super apparent that it's purple, that it's turning this dark purple, but it does diffuse the black a bit, especially when we're gonna be going in and putting um, straight black silhouettes of trees um, onto this painting. So we could, we're going to basically be creating this to be a nice dark purple, and we're bringing that purple from up here kind of into the islands. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but I can definitely see that there's a little bit of purple coming in. Clean your brush. And what you're doing is you're removing that dark paint that's um, the black dark paint from your brush. And let's go in again with a little bit of red or vermilion, I guess we're using. And let's really get that on there again. This is gonna start blending into the black right before your eyes. There we go. It takes a couple seconds, but I can start to see that purple coming in. A bit of blue. And again, that is just changing the color slightly from black to a deep purple. So that when we do our black silhouettes, you know, there's still something interesting in the distance and it's not all just one flat color. We're showing a little bit of depth here now. Okay, clean the brush again. Let's go in one more time. Wipe off any excess paint, a little bit of the vermilion and a little bit of the blue and Bring that in there.
So, when you're painting this, it should just look like a hint of purple, dark purple. So it's not that dark, rich black because our silhouettes need to really pop and the landscape needs to be pushed into the distance and that's why we're bringing in that purple that's in the sky into our landscape. Wipe off any excess paint after you clean your brush and now let's move on to the silhouettes. So now we're on to the silhouettes. Um, we are going to change out our brush and we are going to use this flat head brush okay so it's um straight across cut straight across not rounded and now for the majority of our silhouettes we are going to use this and this brush only afterwards if you want to do some detail work which i might want to do here we'll use the pointy brush in there but i'm going to show you how you can use one brush um to like its full potential <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Let's load up our black onto our canvas. We're going to start off with black and then we're going to move into Viridian Green. And that color is going to be so beautiful when mushed and blended in to the black silhouettes. Just gives you a little bit more to... Um, to add to your painting. Cause often when you're out there and the sun is setting, you know, you do still see that beautiful, you know, forest green hue in the trees. Um, so we're gonna add that in there and let's just see what we develop with these silhouettes. Um, I am quite actually quite excited to do this um, because I've, it's been a while since I've done um, a silhouettes with a, a lot of people. It was popular last year. This year we're doing a lot of different things. <laughs> so let's try this now. There we go. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna load my brush. I'm going to hold it like a pencil. So not super close to the bristles and not too far away from the bristles, okay? You want to have that control. So what we want to do is we want to first decide where are the trees coming from? Where is the earth? So let's go in and we're just going to create somewhere where the trees can be rooted in the ground. And I'm just slowly blending it around, you can take your time, um, or you can be like me and just go a little bit faster because um, we're gonna start to add in different things like bushes and branches and trees down here. So this is all gonna be kind of um, covered up. Next, what you wanna do is with your leftover paint, and so I have used my paint thoroughly from my paintbrush, and now what I wanna do is I wanna give myself some guidance lines of where the next trees are gonna go. So here we go. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to bring my brush across the canvas to show that that is one, I guess you'd call it a tree trunk, I call it a guideline. And then I'm going to go ahead in and I'm going to bring another one here. I, I did load my brush that time. Um, so if you do need to, if you're finding you don't have a lot of paint on your brush, you've really used it up, then of course you can go in and reload your brush. Um, but try to make it so that it's just a little bit, uh, not a lot. And then I'm going to do a third tree in here and it's going to be smaller than the rest. Trees like to have friends, so you try to give them two or three or four friends, right? Um, maybe I could do, let's do, oh, let's do one more, one more right here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use just the, the little edge of the brush. Either the left or the right hand side, that's okay, it's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. We're going to start at the top of the trees, we're going to load our brush just on that little edge right there. And we're start to tap in the top of our tree in just like a, a very random pattern. At this point in time, you really want to start, try to um, think about what the top of a tree looks like. Often it's a lot thinner, there's a little bit of rogue branches coming uh, left and right of the tree trunk and then it starts to build 
in thickness um, towards the middle more so than the very, very top. So you're trying to load your paint on the corner using just the corner of your brush so that you're controlling how all this paint goes onto the canvas. And you're just gonna dab and you're gonna slowly start to bring branches out just by dabbing, not dragging the brush across, but dabbing. And you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, you could, you know, if you want um, to, you could always bring in some like really random shapes where this is maybe thicker on this side because it gets more sun. And then on this side of the, of the tree, maybe there's just a little, a little bit of branches going that way. Now, when we get into the middle of the tree, we're gonna churn our brush sideways and we're gonna to start to dab and make this a bit thicker because now we have branches that are closer to us in sight. It's also building the bottom of the tree to be thicker um, with branches. And then also you have some leaves that are actually facing you. And so they would actually be um, going right across the tree trunk and, and be able to be spread out this way more so than seeing them from the side, which would be like the tree branch going that way in different spurts of branches. So, I mean, really it's about having fun and turning your brush um, around, playing around with it, and just dabbing on this nice thick black paint. And always just, you know, reference your memories of what these trees look like. They're definitely, I'm painting an evergreen right now. Maybe this one is a, I don't know, maybe this one's a blue spruce or something. Who knows? There's black spruce, and they're really thin and wonky looking. They almost look like they, they're already dying when they're, you know, when they grow. And then there's like really big, thick, beautiful, um, long, tall, um, I believe that is the blue spruce. And I could be wrong, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, that's what I have in my mind right now. So that's what we are going to create. So I'm bringing this one tree, and as you can tell, I'm doing one tree at a time. I'm gonna bring this one tree all the way down and I'm even going to make it so that some of the bristles start to shoot upwards bristles branches and it just kind of changes the perception and then at the bottom you can really go and have fun okay let's go into our second tree second tree what we're going to do is we're going to um, play around with a different idea a different tree just to give it a little bit of variety and we're going to use this same brush and we're going to go and we're going to tap, but we're going to make the tree um, by making these like little taps going down in an arrow like fashion and then filling the tree in. So again, you want to just go from side to side and make this kind of bushier. I don't know, maybe these are just softer bristles, but I see these out there all the time. I don't know what kind of tree this is. But the actual brush that we're using can create so many different shapes. And so when you're creating your trees, or if you maybe have a piece of paper that you could practice on first, just see what this does um, as far as tapping it, um, loading it up, mushing it together. Like this tree's more of like a mush mush tree. This tree's like a tappity tap tree. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna complete my other two trees. Um, and again, I do suggest that maybe you pause the video, you can rewind it, how I showed you to do the first two trees. Or um, if you have a specific tree that you do all the time, like if you like to paint and you do it often and you have your favorite tree that you paint, um, please go ahead and do that now. We are going to finish these two trees and then I'm going to put in uh, some different kinds of branches and different trees to really fill up the image. Um, but I'm going to finish this for right now. So now what we want to do is bring in... Um, 
some twigs and branches and maybe even a tree with no leaves on it. Let's just have fun with what we can create and then there'll be the final touches and you have a beautiful painting. So now what we're doing is we're, oh, I'm using the pointy brush and what we're going to be doing is do a very, very soft approach. So you're going to be um, pressing down onto the canvas with your bristle brush, but what you want to do is you want to make it so you're touching the canvas as light as possible because the lighter you press against the canvas, the smaller your branches will be. So let's see, where can it come from? Let's start off at the bottom. And I like to make them look like, like little antlers, really. Um, <laughs> they're really fun to, to kind of build up, you know. So what you want to do is just slowly start to one branch at a time. And I like bringing them up from the bottom. If your brush uh, bristles kind of break against the canvas and kind of become a little bit um, scratchy looking, that's okay too because it really does add to the effect of the overall painting. So we're going to go in and I'm going to bring maybe just one tree here, so softly, soft as I can. I think that'll work. So now wherever it kind of got a little bit thicker, we're going to bring in a branch. And again, you're just building it up as you go along. And you really have to take a look at your tree and your image. And you have to take a look at where, you know, what fits in. So this tree here is very dark and it's getting very close to my big uh, tree that I'm creating right now. So I'm going to start to bring the bristles over this way and I'm going to bring this one more straight up. So I don't want to lose a really nice overall shape of this tree by it getting lost in the other silhouette. So I like to pick and choose where my branches go. And just one tree like this I think will do us well. Let's see if I can bring this trunk to make it a little bit thicker. I like that. And if you do find that these brushes are uh, difficult right now to work with, you can always practice on a piece of paper first getting that really nice light touch. I personally really like how the tree is looking imperfect and scratchy because it's allowing some of the color to come through the uh, from the background and it kind of looks like it's reflecting the color in the sky, which is awesome. I think that's pretty good. Oh, maybe one more. Maybe two more. You can just keep building these trees up. Okay, sure. So that's kind of an idea of bringing in branches. So I might even bring one more of these trees here. And it's okay if it wobbles. Trees wobble. They're always searching for the sun. Trees and plants, they always look for the sun. So if your tree branches or trunks wobble, that's okay, they're just doing their thing. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I think for this one, we're gonna put some branches um, up high. And we're going to do just one or two down low, but I feel like this tree spread it up so fast that its branches started growing up, up high in order to get those leaves to the sun. 
Okay, so now with the same brush, let's put in a little bit of leaves. So this is, this is a great brush to just have fun with and you can just literally do what I call like squishy polka dots. You're really just having fun, basically jabbing the page with these messy polka dots. And not in a hard fashion, I'm still going soft. That is gonna give you a really good look, silhouette-wise, of leaves. Whole bunch of leaves. I love having campfires at night and looking straight up to the sky and seeing all the beautiful silhouettes of the trees, the treetops and leaves. So that's kind of what I'm referencing from my memory right now. Let's clean our brush and let's bring in that beautiful green. Clean our brushes, wipe the excess paint off. Oh, I forgot this one. Wipe the excess paint off. So now that we have the silhouette down, we're able to bring in that beautiful uh, Viridian green to really just bring a bit of a hue of green into our painting. Um, it's a little bit more of a realistic feel because at this time during the day, um, when the sun is starting to go down, it's sun setting, you can still see that beautiful green that's in nature and some of the colors um, coming from your trees. So because this paint is translucent, um, we're able to um, basically um, place it on with this brush, which is again, that rounded flat brush. And we're just going to softly um, see how we brush on the paint. You always, always can go back to the old brushes and um, do the exact same thing over top of the black as you did with the, the, brush, uh, the brush with the silhouettes. But because this is a really great, um, I wanna say like um, blending brush, but it would be more of a, like if you were going to glaze, a glazing brush, that's what I wanna say. So this one is a really great for glazing over color because it doesn't give you streaky lines. It more or less just softly is going to place a rounded shape onto your trees where you can just tap it in and go over top of the black. And I even go a little bit off the black just to show a little bit of a rim of green. Perhaps that's where, you know, the, the sun is still a little bit out the sky's bright and it's just showing a bit of green on the edges. And you're just adding in this wash of color because the paint is so transparent. It won't be a lot. It won't, you know, mess with that black silhouette, but it will add just a little bit of a different and more natural, I should say, um, look and appearance to your painting. Let's do that now. I'm going to do it to all the trees and just to keep things simple, I am actually just going to keep the same color green, which is perfectly okay to do. Um, especially for something as, you know, simple and basic as this painting is, it still comes off very beautiful and you're just filling in all the little extras you need without doing too much. Less is more sometimes when it comes to these things. Just a little bit, maybe at the top as well. Sure. Let's do up here. Just a little bit, just where you think these leaves would catch the sun, I guess. 
a little bit of sun that's left, a little bit of light source that's left in the evening. <laughs> All right, little last note, let's make a little bit of foliage down here. I think that's what it's called. Just something fun to, on the side of this path, I guess. Like we're on our walk to the lake. Again, if you feel like you want to play around with different colors of green, or maybe you want to make some of these trees more of a fall color, all you need is a little bit. Less is more, and you're really just trying to get a really nice wash or glaze to go over top. And maybe even just, you know, appear a little bit on the edge of your trees. Clean your brush. Wipe any excess paint off and take a look at your beautiful creation. And that concludes our painting for today. I really hope you've enjoyed. My name is Tracy Berry and I wanna thank the Scriber Public Library for this wonderful opportunity. The program, our community growing together is fantastic. So I hope you all stay active, stay creative, and I'll see you next time.